Hello everyone, my name is Brian Mack. I'm the director of the Alternative Dispute Resolution Unit. Today is December 6th, 2022. Welcome to the third session in our noon campus training refresher coaching series, focusing today on initiating a dispute. And we're also gonna talk a bit about responding to a dispute. This is a central function for our dispute resolution process. You're gonna use this if you're an attorney and you may well use it also if you're a claim adjuster, a QRC, a medical provider. And even if you're an unrepresented injured employee, you can use this function, but you do not need to if you're an unrepresented injured worker. We developed this series for busy people with limited topics and short duration, 30 minutes to efficiently address things in campus that are essential. I'm happy to introduce today our host for this session, two of our top campus technical experts, very experienced in coaching users and troubleshooting within campus, Aaron Fredrickson, who has been with us before, and also Patty Preventure. Aaron and Patty, as many of you know, are arbitrators and mediators here in the ADR unit. So with that, I turn it over to you, Aaron and Patty. Patty, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself quick? Oh, sure. I'm Patty Preventure. I've been with the department for a little over a year now, um, and I'm a mediator and an arbitrator. If you have any campus questions, I'm always available. All righty, thank you very much, Patty, for helping me out today. My name is Aaron Fredrickson. I'm also a mediator and an arbitrator with the department. Uh, picking up on our series uh, on the first uh, of these programs, we covered the, uh, the dashboard functionality. In the last uh, session that we held, we uh, created a, access to case for a claim, and today we're going to go ahead and initiate a dispute. So um, picking up where we left off, um, I'm at the dashboard, uh, and we're, uh, I am a petitioner attorney, and my client is Aaron Fredrickson. I'm going to go into my claims details page. Uh, let's assume that I have a lot of claims, and I just want to go ahead and find those claims for Aaron Fredrickson. Going to go in, search by employee's name and the last name. And here is the claim that we created. I'm going to access the claim. Um, I want to go ahead and request a certification for dispute uh, because my client needs some medical care and treatment. I know that I'm on the claims details page because it says claim in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to go to this button over in the right hand corner and I'm going to click on submit a filing. And then uh, the dialog box comes up and I am going to look for initiated dispute. And it goes ahead and there is one claim uh, for Aaron Fredrickson, a date of injury of November 2nd, uh, 2020. Next, I'm gonna identify the parties. I'm the attorney for the injured employee. I'm going to signify that. I'm going to highlight the name of the employer and insurance company. It's important that I identify all parties to this dispute. Click next. Uh, the next, the third step, I'm going to request a dispute resolution service. So I go to this drop down feature for dispute action. I want to certify a dispute. So I use the first option. Click next. Uh, then I need to provide information regarding the dispute. So select what type applies most. I have two options, a medical or a rehab. Uh, Mr. Fredrickson has a medical issue. Uh, the second step in this, and it's an important uh, function, is I need to add a particular issue. Uh, when I click on the Add Issue button under the Disputed Issues section, a dialog box comes up. It's asking me if I'm requesting a service or reimbursement. Uh, my client told me that they need a service uh, and they want a second opinion slash consultation. And I'm just going to provide a brief detail regarding that consultation. Just want to correct that typo there. I'm going to leave the status open. I'm requesting a second opinion with Dr. Rockstar. 
and I've gone ahead and successfully created my issue. If I have another issue like payment of a medical bill, I'll go in and I'll click on add an issue and repeat the process. I'm gonna wanna attach a copy of a medical record uh, regarding uh, that, uh, uh, that the doctor has generated. This is for a 106 conference. I'm just gonna edit the description. I can see that my test document successfully uploaded right here. I'm just gonna type a brief explanation. Uh, one of the things I wanna do is I'm just gonna help uh, the department out by putting the name of the claim handler. And their phone number. It's like I have a little typo there. I'm just gonna fix that. Provided a brief explanation, the name of a claim handler. I'm gonna click the next button. Uh, this is my uh, filing summary and signature. I know that I have a medical dispute. I have one issue and the document I'm filing is a request for certification that's gonna be processed on uh, uh, December 6th. And I go ahead, I need to, for this filing, get my attorney's uh, attorney ID number. It's populated their address and phone number. I wanna sign that exactly identical to uh, the name that I'm registered under. Click the attestation and everything has been filled in correctly. The next box will pop up. Now I'm gonna complete my affidavit of service. Looks like we have uh, a counsel assigned for the defense, Marie Lund. The important thing to note of my affidavit of service is uh, where it says US mail, I'll need to mail a copy of these documents to the parties. But anyone where it says uh, under the column of service method says electronic, that means they're gonna be electronically served via campus. Check the, the tick box for the declaration. Sign my name. We have a second attestation. And I'm gonna go ahead and submit this form. And the document's gonna process and it's gonna go ahead and it is gonna serve uh, the parties. Lots of internet traffic. Uh, and then I have my dialog box indicating that this has been successfully uh, submitted. Uh, Patty, if you could jump in. Um, so this, what this is gonna do, but we're gonna simulate it uh, in a uh, short time is Patty at the department is gonna get this in her queue. She's gonna call the insurance claim handler, see if there's a dispute. Uh, and once, uh, if, if there is a dispute, she's gonna go ahead and certify it, send parties her certification letter. And uh, Patty, do you got the dispute ID number? Yeah, is it DS02625374848? Correct. Okay, I'll certify it right now. Just give me a second. Okay, it's just gonna take Patty a minute or two to, to certify this particular document. Uh, you will notice the status is pending. I know that this is not certified because uh, that where it says certified and dispute overview is not highlighted. Uh, so if I was wondering on the status, um, I can also check in the documents tab. Um, I'll see that the only document in there is the request for certification that I uh, filed. Um, Normally, Patty would file her certification document in there, but uh, we're, we're trying to save time here as far as training. So how's things going, Patty? I think good. If you want to refresh it, it might show that it's certified now. Yeah, so everything's certified. So you can see here toward the upper left-hand corner, this is now this pill, I think is what they call it, is highlighted and it's checked. The, the, the issue has been certified. 
Uh, so if I was the uh, petitioner attorney, I'd get a letter from Patty indicating that the claim handler is, is not going to approve the second opinion. I filed my request uh, for certification. Um, like I noted, normally she would file her document here, but we're just trying to do this in an expedited matter. But I know this is certified, so now what I need to do is I need to file my request for assistance. So in order to do that, I would go to my dispute details page. And I know it's the dispute details page because this is highlighted and it says dispute. I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner of the dispute details page and I'm going to click on submit a filing. The dialog box comes up. And I have several options. I'm going to choose a dispute action. It brings me to my dispute resolution services page. Um, I want to request an administrative conference by clicking on request an administrative conference. We are going to file that request for assistance. Um, here I have uh, details regarding uh, what I'm filing under this dispute issue and document summary. I can see that I'm filing a request for assistance, what we formally call the medical request. Um, I need to update my affidavit of service to make sure everyone is served. I already got the plaintiff attorney or the defense attorney there. Click on the tick box. Oops. Need to have uh, the name exactly how it is. Click on the tick box. Got everything updated here. I have the submit a form. And this is now filing my request for assistance. And we'll just wait a minute for this to process. I got my uh, notification screen that it has been successful. If I go back to the dispute details page and look in documents, I can see that I've now filed my request for assistance. So there's one other method to file um, request for certification uh, that I wanted to demonstrate this first one. I demonstrated it from the claims details page. Uh, in this one, I'm gonna do it directly from the dashboard. As you recall in the first session, I click on the upper left-hand corner to go to my dashboard. Um, so I wanna go ahead and I wanna submit a filing. I wanna initiate a dispute. I need to locate the claim. Uh, in this, I have, I, re, I remember the claim number. Just give me one second here while I type this in. I'm gonna type the employee's last name in. Uh, the similar process where it's gonna go ahead, it locates the claim which is the November 2nd, 2020 date of injury. Identify my party, identify the other parties like we did before, uh, dispute action, certify a dispute. Let's say I wanna file a rehab issue. I'm gonna request, um, let's request a voc rehab consultation. I've gone ahead. This indicates that I've successfully added my issue. I might want to attach um, a medical record showing that my client has restrictions. And attach a medical record from Dr. Rockstar. I'm just going to type a brief summary of what I'm looking for. 
as I indicated before, we request that you put the name and, and at least a telephone number for the claim handler. Uh, going to my details page, I'm filing a request for certification on a rehab issue. I'm just going to pull my attorney ID number for this attorney and assign it. Got everything in here correct. The next button highlights. I'm going to go ahead uh, and check the tick boxes for uh, to create my affidavit of service. Have another declaration. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, request uh, uh, file this request for certification. So those are the two ways to go ahead and to uh, initiate a dispute. Uh, this dispute just takes a few moments. It looks like the internet's just a little slow. I have my confirmation. Um, this is a new dispute number. That means it's a new case uh, within our system. So the third way to initiate a dispute, uh, let's say that Aaron Fredrickson came into my office today and indicated that uh, he hurt himself yesterday and he want, it's an admitted injury. Um, the insurance company he already knows is gonna pick it up. He wants me to go ahead and, and file a medical request. Um, more likely than not, that first report of injury wouldn't be filed. Um, I've gone in already, I've checked. Uh, there is not a claim in the system. I tried to access a case or a claim. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and initiate a dispute. Uh, and for this, I don't have a claim number because it's a new date of injury. Um, Fredrickson's kind of unsure what his uh, social security number is, but I have used the WID lookup function uh, that I demonstrated in our first session. And I pulled the WID up and I have that too because uh, he's an existing client. So I know the date of injury is uh, December 5, 2022. And with this process, I got to go ahead and I have to add information. And by adding this information, I'm creating a claim shell. Uh, you don't have to add all of the information. The information that you need to add um, is uh, by highlights. But if you have information that's not required, that there isn't an asterisk by, uh, it is helpful uh, to go ahead and add that. So I have Aaron's. Uh, Social security number, I need to add a date of birth. First name. I know the mailing address. Aaron has told me that uh, it was at First International Bank. And believe it or not, it's uh, First Dakota Indemnity is the uh, insurance carrier. So we have that information. Let's see, just wanna check, make sure I got all the required fields in there. It looks like I do. And then this brings me to the screen where I need to identify the party that I represent. Really important to identify both the employer and insurer as they are other parties. Just don't click one, click both. I'm going to certify a dispute. Uh, Aaron wants some medical treatment. He's seeking service. Uh, he's seeking some prescriptions. seeking medicine. Obviously, you'd want to be a little more specific. Add that supporting document. Let's say that he already has a medical record.
completed that, added the name of the, the claim handler uh, to help uh, the, the department get in contact, add the attorney ID. Create my affidavit of service. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, submit that request for certification. And it's filed. So a lot of times now, you know, attorneys are saying you've done a great job in showing how to uh, go ahead and file certifications. But uh, let's say that you're a defense attorney and majority of the time you are responding uh, to these uh, various uh, disputes. So I'm going to log in as a defense attorney. And I'm a defense attorney, and I know that this is on Fredrickson. Uh, and I have a lot of uh, claims here in my queue. Oh, there's Aaron down there on the end. But let's say that we want to, we can't find it. Just going to search the employee's last name. I always misspell Aaron's last name, so I just typed in Fred. Here's the claim related to the November 2nd, 2020 date of injury. Now I'm gonna look under related claims. Patty, this 748 was the claim that you certified and you filed a uh, request for assistance on, right? I think so. I put my piece okay. of paper away. All righty. Let's just check. All right. Yeah, we have this is the this is the dispute um, that uh, the request for assistance has been filed on. Uh, now I'm the defense attorney and I need to file a response. So I'm going to go to the dispute details page, which I did. I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner. Click on the submit a filing button. Look for the filing name. I want to file a rehab or medical response. Uh, I need to select just one party that I represent. I know that often 99% of the time you represent both. Uh, you just need to select one. So I'm going to select the insurance company. I don't need to add any additional parties. Uh, did the party dispute the resolution managed care plan? Uh, if it's not applicable, click yes. Here is my uh, response uh, uh, disputed issues and payment screen. Um, I have the issue number. I see that it was certified. I see a brief description of what the employee wants. And right here, our response to issue is I can agree with the, the disputing request or I can disagree. So if I wanna file a response disagreeing, I'm gonna click on disagree with requesting party request. I have an independent medical examination report that says that it was a temp ag at most, fully resolved. If I wanna go ahead and upload that on the next page, I'm gonna locate that. I'm gonna select 106 conference for document type, description, IME report of Dr. Wonderful. I can repeat the process if I have additional documents that I want. I'm gonna create my uh, affidavit of service. That's a paralegal, I don't need to serve them. I got the 
insurance carrier there. Got everyone. Got everything filled out. The submit uh, button highlights. And I'm going to go ahead and click submit. I know that it's successful. I'm just going to jump back to the dispute details page and I can see my response in the documents tab. Just a couple quick common problems that people have been having in filing a response. Uh, if only a request for certification has been filed uh, and a request for assistance has not been filed, you will not be able to file a response. Uh, common things are to check for in the upper left hand corner of the dispute details page for the certification pill or looking in the documents tab. So if only the request for certification is filed, you will not be able to file a response. Uh, sometimes the dispute might be closed. I know the dispute status is open because it says it's pending review. If this uh, pill up here toward the, maybe I don't know how you describe that, the, the upper middle part of the page says closed, the dispute is closed. It might've been sent over to the Office of Administrative Hearings, withdrawn, et cetera. Uh, you will not be able to file something. You can certainly contact the department for additional information. Um, or if you have any other uh, problems or concerns or something just doesn't seem to be right, uh, certainly feel free to reach out to the help desk and uh, we can go ahead and uh, the help desk can assist you. In the chat feature, I'm going to go ahead and drop in uh, information in order to contact the help desk. Uh, and with that, this ends uh, portion of the recorded presentation. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you very much, Patty. Have a great afternoon or rest of your day, everyone. Bye-bye now.